So for the White Rose Forest, Landscapes for Water is a catchment scale approach to natural flood management. In the White Rose Forest, we've been very fortunate to work with three highly motivated and capable landowners. I think it's almost 561 hectares here in the Yorkshire Dales um, within the White Rose Forest project area. It's one of the largest uh, native woodland creation schemes in England. Yeah, here at Snay Zone, we're in the Suno catchment, uh, which was the top end of it. So all the water you see here that is coming down here today and quite often, most days, will eventually end up in York. Um, and obviously, a lot of, we've had a lot of issues in York of recent times with a lot of uh, communities being flooded out down there. So yeah, things we're doing here should hopefully, you know, make a bit of a dent into that. So I'm Kelly Hollick and I uh, project manage the nature recovery here at Broughton. We've got 2,600 acres of what has been for the past tens of decades intensive agriculture. So over the last four years we've been looking at how we can transform what was a monoculture landscape into this mosaic of different habitats that not only produce healthy food but also help to deliver these essential ecosystem services that are required for a healthy planet. I'm Jess York, I'm a project manager with the National Trust in West Yorkshire. Today we're here at March Hague which is part of Marsden Moor in the South Pennines. So our project here at March Hague forms part of a larger landscape scale restoration project that the National Trust and Yorkshire Water are doing in partnership with the White Rose Forest. The project is looking to restore, recreate and re reconnect lost and degraded habitats of the South Pennines. Part of that will be restoring our upland blanket bog. Another thing we'll be doing is installing thousands of leaky dams to hold back water and help with natural flood management. And the third key element we're looking at is, is tree planting and looking to recreate the woodland habitat that would have existed in the steep sided valleys at the edge of the moorland. All three landowners' projects are at the top of their respective catchments, which is the right place to start for a long term approach to natural flood management. Secondly, they're all next to really important habitats. So the design criteria are really, really important to get any woodland planted at all. And the landowner behind that scheme has to be completely committed to the long term. And all three have done that. So I'm Richard Barrett. I'm a Forestry Commission Wooden Officer covering West Yorkshire. And as part of my role, I'm responsible for the regulation of forestry projects, which includes environmental impact assessments. The Forestry Commission has been involved throughout the development of all of these projects, working closely with the White Rose Forest, the Woodland Trust and landowners to help achieve landscape scale nature recovery objectives and getting the right tree in the right place. It's really positive that Trees for Climate could fund the additional time and resource required for design and planning in these important landscapes so that the Forestry Commission could support each project through the regulatory process, ultimately delivering landscape scale projects that nature, climate and people will benefit from way into the future. So as part of the England's Community Forest Network, the White Rose Forest can access the Trees for Climate grant fund. Trees for Climate is part of the government's Nature for Climate Fund. This funding allows each community forest to shape the grant programme to reflect the needs of local landowners and local communities. Because we've got like a really ambitious sort of wider nature recovery rewilding uh, vision here at Broughton, Trees for Climate Fund through White Rose Forest just really allowed us to kind of work to that vision with flexibility and being able to create all these div different sort of habitats for, for biodiversity. Without the White Rose Forest support and their Trees for Climate funding programme, the project we have today would not have happened. It's often overlooked the amount of time and money involved in actually designing these projects, whether that's staff resource to, to do that project management, all of the surveys and supporting information that we need to gather to design these schemes. It takes a really long time and it costs a lot of money and the White Rose Forest have been with us all the way from the very beginning, supporting us and getting us to this point here today where we've got 65,000 trees in the ground. My name's Kath Godfrey, I work for Natural England on the Tree Action Plan and my role is to assess woodland creation proposals to make sure basically that we get the right tree in the right place. We're really keen to see a very holistic approach to woodland creation and Trees of Climate is really the only funding op option that's able to deliver that fully and then in terms of the ongoing management uh, Trees of Climate is also the only option that which, is, which is able to fund both the woodland landscape but also the open landscape and that's really critical in achieving this sort of overall mosaic which will maximise nature recovery. Trees for Climate has been transformational. In the last four years we've got about a hundred individual landowner contracts covering one and a half thousand hectares of new woodland creation. So where it can be justified, we can offer landowners substantial resources above and beyond the woodland creation planning grant, particularly to help assess and survey 
and design complicated schemes in and around these highly regulated landscapes. These three pro projects represent a significant step towards our 2050 vision, whereby natural flood management will have a significant reduction in flood for our major cities like Leeds and York, as well as increasing biodiversity corridors and wildlife.